conduct the front and center of the front. I want to see that. I want to see that happen. Conducting is amazing. Can we get them on the phone, Ben? Call them. We'll call them. Yeah. Sure, so, <laughs> so I did my studies at um, uh, Rollins College okay. in Orlando. Yeah. And I also VCU for my master's. Man, that's awesome. I went to uh, St. Louis Community College for one semester nice. of one music theory class. I did not finish. But you know what? That semester. That one class. You know what? Yeah. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. And you know what, too? Um, the teacher that I had, he was a, a jazz uh, major. That was really? his thing. And he, and he taught me jazz theory, like the, the barest of bones. I'm not even close to on your level. I'm not oh, even wow. going to pretend. Um, but anyway, beyond that, so fast forward, moving forward, you've been all over the world. You've been on huge stages. What do you think is the biggest audience you've played in front of? Oh, uh, Uganda. Uganda. South, yep, in Africa. Okay. It was so many people, literally, we just lost sight. Really? It was, we couldn't see no more. It was that many people there. It was a, just an ocean of people. It was an ocean of people, wow. and that was probably, it was that trip that I realized that I was famous. Did yes. you guys hear that? Yeah. That's how you know it's real. Yeah, because, um, true story. So, we were there with um, Maxi Priest. <laughs> we were there in Maxie Priest, and That's it was a cool. show with my good friend, uh, Lynn Roundtree, trumpet player, yeah, and yeah. Joaquin Joyner. Okay. So me and a couple of friends of ours, band members, mm -hmm. you know, we were in the back. We did our show. I mean, amazing. Yeah. Crowds roaring. So Maxie's up. We're doing our thing. And then we decided to go into the audience. Okay. Come wireless side, gear. Wire, no, we were just, well, I went wireless, and yeah. it was crazy. That was nice. <laughs> That's on. That's on camera, too. So... But um, <laughs> we went out into the audience, and while Maxie was doing one song, we were out dancing. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. We were okay. out dancing, you know, just out there. Yeah. Well, when I got back to the States, maybe like two or three weeks later, yeah. I got a message via a uh, promoter uh -huh. that I was in the National Enquirer wow. of Africa. Yes, yeah, so I'm officially famous. Okay. Yeah, it's like, in print. It's like, and I'm talking like, boom, centerfold. Do you have that? You know, I have it yeah. in the archives. Yeah. It's, an, it's an amazing. It's like, who is Mitchell dancing with? This voluptuous is this. <laughs> so, it's, so you're not just in there. You're in there for something scandalous, yeah, huh? Yeah, it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad? But it was, I, mean, I, was, I mean, I just like, wow, you know, that I'm officially famous. Like, there they you have go. a picture of me in the <laughs> African <laughs> National Enquirer. That's amazing. Yeah, that's whole amazing. country. Man, that's incredible. Yeah, quite. That's uh, yeah. I, that's that's next level stuff. Yeah. That's then next I came level home. Stuff. Yeah. Nobody knew me. <laughs> right. Right. You come it's home like, to your hometown. They're like, like Nate, right, what's up? Who is this? Yeah. Who, he plays piano or something. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, no. I mean, you play piano. You play drums. You play bass. Mm -hmm. You play guitar. Yep. Saxophone. Yep. Yep. Saxophone. What other? What else? Clarinet. Do you play? Clarinet. And brass instruments. I hear Rosemary around the corner going. What? All yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Um, so I mean, we played a few gigs together yes. too. Yeah, uh, we had a gig at the uh, soon-to-be Spirit Halloween uh, building, Franklin Manor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here in town. That place. That place. That yeah. place. But back before it, it was became all those that place. Crappy things. It was an incredible stage and an, it and was. an awesome audience that we got. To, oh, there it is, right there. Yeah, yeah I think that's they, us. Uh, yeah, that's me. Playing a bad I'm on Stevie drums. Ray Vaughan and you're on drums. Yeah, and that's our that's hands. Jeff Williams on bass. I love him because he just he was like, I'm just gonna sit on my amp this whole the show. whole time. But he moves the whole time. Whole time. Yeah, keeps you engaged. So he does. So like, how many players do you know that are standing that are at full attention and they look like they're asleep? They're Come playing. On, he, he keeps energy. He does. He does. Yeah. He's really impressive that way. All right, uh, serious top serious okay. topic. Um, your wife passed away. Correct. And you almost quit music, right? Did quit. You did quit. No, not almost. Okay. Did quit. Okay. I can't blame you for that. Oh, yeah, it was rough. I can't even imagine. How long did she battle? Um, okay, so... It was cancer. Yes, it was. It was... So, it was a very rare cancer. It was a head and neck cancer mm -hmm. called nasopharyngeal. Yeah. So, um, it was probably... It probably averaged out to about seven years. Yeah. Seven years. Total. And with the seven year battle, a lot of it was um, extent. Well, her lifespan was extended so far. Yeah. Because of the health uh, regimens that she took. Okay. 
So it's just a matter of it slowed it down. And then, of course, you know, she went through her series of chemos and radiations and so on and so on. Yeah. Um, she, the first time, well, when she initially got cancer, um, she got it. Uh, we were, let me see, 2009, uh, she was pregnant. She found she was pregnant. And, you know, they told us that, yeah, you're going to have a baby. And we recommend that you get rid of the baby and all that. We actually prayed. I mean, we really, literally, we prayed about the situation and we just said, you know what, whatever God decides, then that's what it's going to be. Yeah. Well, long story short, um, the baby was born. Yeah. Um, um, C-section. Yeah. And she got over cancer. Wow. So, you know, my, my daughter was here. Yeah. Destiny. A lot of people saw us hanging out, you know, this weekend, I guess, because we're doing some things. But um, my daughter is here, um, Keisha. She went into remission. Yeah. Well, a year later, she caught it again. It okay. came back. And when it came back that time, it came back extremely aggressive. Yeah. Um, at that point, we were living in the Virginia area. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to move to Florida yeah. to get her to, like, Moffitt Cancer Center. Sure. And that's where she passed that, you know, and I just decided to stay here. But at that time, it was like music was the last thing in my mind. I just kind of stopped. You know, I just needed to find that place for me, mm -hmm. you know, instead of trying to just give out this stuff to everybody else. It was like, I, I needed me back. Yeah. The process. I, I would imagine, and this is simply speculative, mm -hmm. but I would imagine that, that when you're going through something that difficult, you have to lose yourself a little bit just to help everyone else get through it. And then after it's yes. over, coming back to yourself, finding yourself again, might be one of the hardest things. I think it's very interesting that you said that because I promise I just had this conversation with someone. Yeah. And one of the things that came up um, actually in the conversation is because um, about a month or so ago, uh, actually the same anniversary, this is so weird, same anniversary weekend of my wife's passing, which was around September 4th, a friend of mine, his name is Isaac Bird. He's, yeah. a, he's a trumpet player. Mm -hmm. And his wife uh, uh, was pregnant yeah. Uh, contracted COVID. Huh. Contracted COVID. While pregnant. While pregnant. That's terrible. They delivered the baby maybe a few days. Uh, they delivered the baby like around, I guess, September 1st or maybe the last week of August. Mm -hmm. But his wife passed from that September 6th, two days after my um, the wow. anniversary of my wife's uh, wow. pa uh, anniversary passing. So long story short, um, I had to help him. Yeah. through that situation as sure. far as, you know, just checking on him and all that. And when we were having this conversation uh, with some friends of ours, like a couple of days ago, the one thing that came up in the conversation that stands so true based on what you just said to me sure. is nobody within that first maybe year ever asked me how I was doing. <laughs> like not one person. Yeah. Everyone asked, how are your kids? Sure. You know, how's the family? Sure. How's this? Sure. But not one single person just said, how are you doing? Sure. Well, that makes sense, though, because when you're going through it and you're you're a very strong personality. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, when they when they see a really strong personality, there's an assumption that kind of happens. That he's good. Right. He's taking care of this. Right. But the people that really need our attention right now are the people that he's helping to take care of right. and to see through this. So you're you know, you're kind of at the helm of the ship, you know, steering all the while internally and maybe you do this i do this too i tend to when when things are really we're, when things are bad we're twins you, we're Libra twins, twins. <laughs> yeah. we're Libra twins yes. but you compartmentalize we, and you we take you say okay inside. that thing sucks i'm gonna put that over here right for now correct and then when i'm when everybody else is good i'll take that out and i'll correct deal with it. we put our needs uh we literally have the same birthday like like know, yeah we're October we have the same 2nd. birthday yeah and um we take it we take yeah. our own stuff and put it to the side and we take on everyone else's burdens and mm -hmm. we deal with our own stuff silently. Mm -hmm. But um, that was probably the one of the hardest situations ever. One, yeah. because you know, you're dealing with, that's a soulmate. So at the end of the day, yeah. this is not the friend down the street. This is not, I mean, not to take away from the sensitivity of it. Uh, this is not mom. This is not dad. No, of course. This is not a child. This is the person that lays in your bed with you every single night. Well, the person that, that laid you, in your bed that with laid, you. Right. And that you released all your vulnerability, yeah. uh, you became you. Like yeah. they saw you in the rawest form of you. Yeah. And to lose that person after 10, 15, so many years, yeah. and now you're going to bed alone yeah. and having to deal with silence, mm -hmm. you know, darkness, walls, emptiness, yeah. you know, that, that's, that's rough. Does it still hurt? 
No, not as much. No. no. And actually, you know, and I say that very strongly because it doesn't. Because it took me, I mean, it took me like maybe five or six years to really get over it. Mm -hmm. um, it took me, uh, probably my first year I never grieved. My yeah. second year is when I actually grieved. And then it was kind of like, just kind of went from there. But I remember when it just kind of like, it changed from grief into thankfulness. Thankfulness, why? Because it was like, you know what? I had a precious, I had a precious woman, a gift given to me. Yeah. Uh, I learned a lot from it. And okay, now I'm, you know what? You can go crazy or you can accept it. Accept it and move on. And I mean, I have two beautiful kids by her. And yeah. at the end of the day, it's like love. It's like, hey, just embrace it when it, com embrace it, when it comes again. Man. There it is. Strong and, words from a strong man. And to add, um, I definitely say that, I mean, just even the connection, the passion to that has created some beautiful music that I can share with people. So. Well, on that note, mm -hmm. you've got some music that you wrote yes. for your late wife. Mm -hmm. That album, Soulmate. Yes. Yeah. The whole thing. That right? whole album, which mm -hmm. is crazy, that whole album, well, the whole album actually was not necessarily, and I don't mean this out of, out of any lack of respect. The actual album itself truly was not written to her, mm -hmm. but there were some key songs on that album that were for her, but the album was actually created for the sake of relationship. Yeah. Just love in general. Sure. Just the whole generalization because, you know, sure. it's like I have, she gave me this gift, mm -hmm. you know, it was, but um, honestly, we did, it's like we dedicated this gift to everybody. You create this, this artistic uh, vessel that's a little bit general and you allow people to fill that Correct. with their own It's like bring you into my world yeah. and it's okay now for you to actually look behind the veil mm -hmm. and actually see yeah. what I had. And feel that. And I want you guys to have a piece of me, uh, my passion through your music to yeah. maybe enhance what you have in your own relationship. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. That's great. That's a great message. And the, the, this album was great, man, because you know, um, the Soulmate album, uh, I mean, it, it went leaps and bounds that we did never expect it. it I remember was, watching that. Yeah, man, it was crazy. I was paying attention on Facebook. That particular yeah. album actually was nominated for a NAACP award. That was the Image Award. That was the Image Award. Okay. And it was also nominated as uh, Album of the Year mm -hmm. uh, for the Smooth Jazz Network. And yeah. I mean, there was a lot, excuse me, a lot of different awards that came by mm -hmm. way of that. Well, it just goes to show you when you dig deep as an artist and you pull from the hardest moments in your life and you and you say I, I, I gotta make something out of this correct that that tends to be the stuff that resonates with people and not because you not because you did that intentionally for them but, but, but because when you pull when you reach down into that deep dark well and you pull something out that's deeply meaningful mm -hmm. everyone can connect with that I yes think. and I think that's why that album is so powerful yeah so with that I don't think I can tease it any better than that um, Nate's going to play a couple of songs from his, uh, his album here, Soulmate. And then after that, we're going to, uh, well, we've got a couple other things coming up later on. That was a serious conversation. I mean, <laughs> I you know, you let but me you know what, it's answer. something that, you know, we, we need to have at times, you know. I think so. Uh, because people, they tend to run from emotions. Yeah. They well, it's like, you, like we said, when you compartmentalize and you say, okay, I'll deal with that later. You yeah. have to eventually pull that off the shelf and Correct. deal with it. And I mean, and as a, a creative, yeah. You know, the one thing I've learned is that, I mean, for me, dealing with um, a, a influx of emotions coming in, mm -hmm. whether it be uh, happiness, sadness, yep. whatever the case may be, yep. the best thing that a creative could do is get on their instrument mm -hmm. and just let it come out. Because that's, yeah, that's what we're put here so. to do.